Hey guys, Tacoma Guy here. Another section on how to use HP tuners on a Tacoma, second generation Tacoma. All right, so we've the last video is kind of long, but it's a lot of explaining to do um, to calibrate this mass airflow sensor. So you've got your mass airflow sensor calibrated, okay? So let's see if we got that. So you have your new intake on, you've run full throttle passes, and then now when you data log it, your fuel is staying steady all the way down this whole thing. Let's see if I can find one here. So now when you're doing your full throttle run, your fuel steady, staying steady all the way down. This difference here is because the oxygen sensor is maxed out at this green line, but we're running richer than that. But you can see everything's straight, flat. That's how it's going to read. But once you get this set at 12.6, 12.5, somewhere in there, where it's flat all the way across on your full throttle pass or heavy hard passes like this, um, then your fuel's set. So now... We're done with this one, okay? Um, and once you go through all those variations, uh, you might even want to change the name of your map or something, I don't know. But now your mass airflow sensor is done, okay? So now we have to go back to fuel, go back to general. So fuel, go down, click general, and set your stoic, what you want it to be. This is going to be anywhere from 15 to 14 to 1, okay? in the north and then we have uh, ethanol fuel I like to run it slightly richer than 14.7 so I'm gonna go 14.4 on that okay I want that to be 14.4 this is setting your fuel and then for power enrichment okay this is your full throttle map again I'm gonna leave this at 50 and 45 for now this could be anywhere from 60 to 40 in that range and it's this is personal preference this is when you want, how hard you want to get in the throttle before you go into fuel enrichment. Maybe you want to stay at that 70 to get the better gas mileage. That's a little excessive. I would keep it between 40 and 60, okay, um, on these maps. And again, all this tuning is at your own risk, and you may or may not be overriding emission control, so it may or may not be legal. But again, you're doing all this at your own risk. Maybe it's an off-road vehicle. I don't know. But this is just how you use the software and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so now we go to power enrichment. I'm going to make mine, and I would just go to 11.5, okay? So if you take your 14.4 or whatever you make that to, divide it by 11.5. In this case, this is going to come to 1.5. And then equals is going to replace this. I'm not going to, I don't want to add. The one thing you have to be careful is not to hit add or multiply, depending on what you're doing. If you're changing the number, hit replace. If you're changing it by percentage, like when you're doing mass airflow adjustments, when you're working on your mass airflow sensor, you're usually changing by a percentage. Everything else, you're usually going to change by a number. So this one, I want 11.5. Click that. 11.5 all the way across. Just want to hit full throttle. The only one you may or may not want to change is this one, but I think for right now, let's just leave that all at 11.5 to continue our tuning. So from now on, this is what you're going to see when you go to full throttle. They're both going to be maxed out and going to be perfectly flat lines. That's why you have to calibrate your mass airflow sensor first, because you're not going to be able to see if it's running rich or lean anymore after that. Once you go past uh, 12 to 1 uh, fuel air ratio, you're not going to be able to tell the difference anymore. But 11.5 is going to be pretty good because after that, you're going to tune for power for drivability. And that's more of a personal thing, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so that's setting the fuel. The next thing you want to do, if you're tuning, you set your mass airflow sensor. That's the first thing. The second thing we're going to do is check for knock. And then these are your ignition maps here.
And basically, the big one is going to be these 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 first two maps here. Okay, this is your base spark map right here. This is going to set your base timing. But we're going to go in here. Now that we've changed our fuel, okay, what you're going to do, we have our fuel set. Whatever you like this, 14.7, 14.4, 14.1, whatever you want. And then your power enrichment, we're going to do this to 11.5 is pretty close. It might not be perfect. It might not be, but it's pretty darn close to where you're going to be. Okay, you're going to tweak that as you're tuning. Okay, but that's at least going to get you in safe fuel, and the truck's going to like that. It's going to like it better than the 10 to 1 that it comes with. Because it comes with, like, it's way too rich. You're going to run in this anywhere between 11.5 to 11 oh, Somewhere in that range is where the truck's going to be happy. But 11.5 is going to be pretty good. Then you're going to have to do another data log. So now your mass airflow sensor is set, and then now your um, fuel is set. So save that to a new map, okay? So we're going to do that, hit file, save as, and then you're going to rename that, okay? So maybe the first one was just mass airflow sensor and then whatever number it came to. Now you're going to go to mass air flint or something base and a base fuel, something like that. So whatever it makes sense to your brain, save the file as that. And then now we're going to go do another data log. So when you reflash your computer, it's going to erase all the data. Okay, so you're going to reflash it. But when you reflash it, you have to immediately go out for a new data log. Don't drive it and then data log, you reflash this map to it, go out and do a data log all in the same day. Like within the next time you drive it, you're doing a data log. And then you're going to data log that. And what you're going to look for is this spark knock. Okay. You're going to, we're now we're going to start logging that. See how this is different than my other map because my mass airflow sensor is already set. Even though I still have it on here. And now I'm worried about this timing. So knock feedback is probably what we uh, can log. See that knock in there? We have to get rid of that. So now I'm looking down here, sorry. And then what we're gonna do is do, the, uh, do a hard pass. And then wherever you see this knock load, we have to knock that spark down. So you're gonna go into here. So we have a... Uh, at least four degrees of knock, right? And where is that? It's at 2100 RPM. And where's my load? Absolute load is at 90%. So at 90%, at 2000 RPM, I have four degrees of knock. So when we go to our map, we're gonna go to our spark. We're gonna do our base spark. So at 2000 RPM, 90% load. Uh, and see how that is, and that's going all the way across. Is that going all the way across? It's going all the way across. So basically, we have knocked the whole time. Now again, this this chart and this map aren't exactly the same. We're just using this as an example. And then ninety percent is the same as one hundred percent for me. So I'm going to go in here in two thousand. Technically, we're just changing that cell, but when you look at the chart, it's this knock is staying steady all the way down. So that knocked that whole pass. So we can't have that. We have to fix that. So then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go minus 2 degrees. Or 3 degrees. Something like that. And we're going to add that to the value. There. Now we took out 3 degrees of timing. <laughs> Eighty percent, I think, is your blend map, and seventy percent is your part throttle, if I remember correctly. So this map, this one here, you may want to blend. You could do that. Do those two, and this is your interpolate. So right now we think the timing is good here. This timing we had to lower, but now this timing in the middle is off. Okay, this middle cell, we've changed these two. So once you're at 80%, 100%, that has to be around the same timing. So now we're going to do this. Interpolate fill. 
and then that'll average this these cells to this cell, okay? And then you're going to go out, you're going to load this map in, you're going to go out and do another full throttle pass right away. As soon as you load that map in, you're going to go out, do another full throttle pass, you're going to come in here and check your knock and see what's going on. Make sure it's good. Am I, am I looking at the wrong one? Just to make sure. And then, and so this is how you do the adjustment. Now, one one note I have to to make is that in this case we did the wrong adjustment because I forgot something. This uh, knock map always reads minus three percent. Three percent is zero. I don't know why it does that. It just does that. So when that was reading four percent, okay, that was actually. We only needed to minus off one degree on there. Okay, so we did an over adjustment, but in this case, I'm really just showing you how to do it. So if this would have been in reality, we would just minus off instead of three degrees, we should have did one degree, but we already minus off two degrees. So let's add two more degrees back in. Add two degrees. This is why you don't, this is why you always save your last variation, because worst case is you can just close this map off, open a new map, and then start over again. Like, oh, I made the a wrong reading. And then we're going to interpolate fill to get that middle section averaged out. There we go. That should have been our actual adjustment. And again, don't use this timing table to set. This isn't my final timing table. This is my pre-timing table. Uh, I'm just using these as examples. I'm not really showing you my final maps yet, <laughs> if I'm going to, probably not. But uh, ignition timing is actually pretty easy to set because it, it's either knocking or it's not. And in this case, you can see it's minus 3 everywhere. There's, oh, what's that? There's a little blip somewhere. There we go. There was a little bit of knock right there. So 3 is 0, and it's reading 5. That's 2.5 degrees so two and a half degrees of knock at 2200 RPM at which load at 80, 88 at 90% load again. So if this were the adjustment we were making, and then that two degrees goes from 2100 RPM okay see our throttle is closing here so I must have knew there was a knock I was tuning that out. So see, I'm getting a little bit of knock, and I just let off the gas. So I know that right in that range, there's a knock. Then you go into your map. 2,000 RPM, 80%, and in this case, you just change those cells. And you can either change all three or these two. I think ultimately I was making these three the same because I didn't want to have any problems. You just go to those two. Minus two, add it, and you've changed that map. And you're going to copy this whole thing. And you're going to paste it to this map. Make those two maps the same. And that's how you do your timing. Technically, I make this map the same, but this map is lower. Unless you're an expert, I'm going to say just leave that alone right now. And that's stage one on how to change your timing. Subscribe, like, and share. All right? Thanks. Bye.